we've just been looking at different types of transport across the plasma membrane. And due to the fact that this transport is so specific, for example, with carrier proteins, they recognize very particular molecules or ions and allow them to be transported. Uh, due to that fact, due to the specificity, this ends up leading to some differences on the two sides of the plasma membrane. There's, in most cases, going to be a difference in charge buildup on the two sides of the membrane. And that's what our focus is going to be on for the rest of this chapter. This charge difference allows many different, very important, critical things for cells. This is going to essentially uh, allow us to understand how nerve cells are able to send signals, for example. So let's focus in on this difference in charges. There is a difference in charge, on the two sides of the membrane, that's due to a few key things. For one, just the permeability of the membrane, the fact that it is permeable to some things and not others, um, and then the action of certain pumps. We've looked at an example of a sodium potassium pump, and we've seen how that pump transports three positive charges in one direction and two positive charges in the other direction. So as long as that pump is active, that's going to be actively promoting a difference in charge balance on the two sides of the membrane. The other thing that we can exist is just the fact that certain molecules exist inside of cells and those molecules might be charged. For example, DNA. DNA is housed, uh, of course, inside of the nucleus. And remember the structure of DNA, it's got all those negatively charged phosphate groups attached to it. So there tends to be an accumulation of negative charges inside of the cell, for example, DNA. So due to the combination of all of these things, we end up having, in general, a more negative interior and a more positive exterior um, ac across that plasma membrane. And this difference in charge, we have a name for this, we call this a potential difference, potential difference. This is the same concept as if you've taken physics, uh, often this is second semester physics, considering the distribution of charges in space, and if there is a difference in charges, then we say that there is a potential difference. Um, there's a potential for charges to be pushed and moved as long as there's charge separation. So anytime you hear this phrase, potential difference, you can equate that to thinking about difference in charges. Um, this is also the same thing as just talking about a potential. So potential, potential difference, difference in charges, those are all referring to the same sort of concept. And again, in general, we are going to be seeing that cells tend to have more negative interiors and more positive exteriors in terms of the charge separation. So we are going to focus in on potassium for just a minute. Potassium is really key for establishing this potential difference that cells have. And remember that with potassium, it tends to accumulate inside of the cell. And that's because those sodium potassium pumps are doing just that. They're actively moving sodium out of the cell and potassium ions into the cell. Okay, so potassium is being brought inside of the cell. However, at the same time, the membrane has a lot of channels that allow potassium ions to move. Okay, so if there's a high concentration gradient inside the cell, if potassium accumulates inside of the cell, then diffusion is going to naturally try and um, carry those ions back out. Diffusion would tend to bring them out. However, that's kind of balanced out by the fact that we just said a moment ago, there are negatively charged molecules inside the cell. Okay, so there's this electrical attraction or charge attraction that tends to bring potassium ions back in towards the cell. So there are these two different sorts of forces acting um, against each other. They, they end up coming to some sort of a balance. And if we were to measure that balance using a very sensitive voltmeter, if we were to stick a little tiny probe just inside of the cell and hold another probe just outside of the cell, and if we were to measure the difference in those two locations, what we would find is a voltage difference of about 90 millivolts. The, the cell's interior would be 90 millivolts lower than the potential outside of the cell and that would, would be measuring just due to um, potassium ions. So based on measurements with just potassium, what we would say is that the equilibrium potential of potassium is minus 90 millivolts. What the minus is telling us, this is telling us the inside of the cell is at a lower potential than the outside of the cell which is essentially just another way of saying the inside of the cell tends to be more negatively charged than the outside of the cell.
So this value, minus 90 millivolts, this is something that is only taking into consideration potassium ions, but we know that there are a lot of other ions relevant for cells as well. And in fact, we could measure an equilibrium potential for each of them. Each ion would have its own separate equilibrium potential. And those potentials in large part are based on the concentration differences in the two locations, inside versus outside of the cell. So just to show some of the more common examples of ions that cells, uh, that we will be encountering in cells. Okay, so we've just been looking at potassium. Due to this concentration difference, uh, we just saw that the potential difference is minus 90. Each of these other ions, notice they have their own concentration differences. So it turns out for each of these, an equilibrium potential can be determined. There's actually a way to calculate this equilibrium potential. This is probably the most math we're going to be doing together this semester. We're going to learn to calculate these equilibrium potentials, and it's going to be based on these concentration differences. So uh, we will do some calculations for, for um, sodium and for potassium. Those are the the two probably most common ions that we're going to be dealing with here in the short term. And we're going to be grabbing these numbers in order to help us do that calculation. So I'm going to move on from this slide for now, but we'll come back as needed to pick up some of these values.